Hi, everybody, and welcome to Studying the Masters. I am your host, Alicia Diane, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Uh, gosh, it's been a busy morning, but it's been a great morning also. So um, I have already prepared some images for us to use today. So this is going to be pretty exciting. If you guys are not aware, Jin Kim is an awesome um, Disney concept artist. He's worked on, like we see here, Frozen. He's worked on... Um, Tangled, he's worked on, um, let's see what else I have, Moana. And this is actually um, what introduced me to Jen Kim first. These are some of the images that we're going to be working on today. But I have this book, and it's called um, it's called The Art of Moana. And I have it, and it's been like an awesome inspirational and like um, just go-to book for me. And it introduced me to Jen Kim, and he's done a lot of concept art for Disney. Um, he's one of the newer artists that we're going to be studying. Um, most of the artists that we've studied, um, some of them have already passed on, and some of them have worked on some of the more classic films. But um, this is actually a very modern artist. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into some poses here. And I'm going to start right here with Elsa. And um, you may already know that he's not the solo character designer for a lot of these, and um, particularly this one. Um, from Frozen, uh, there were it's it's usually a collaborative effort over there at any of the major studios where they come up with the final character designs. But these are some of the sketches that he did um, for the visual development um, on Frozen. And we're going to start with a couple of poses, and we're going to do um, ten minute poses today. So we're going to go ahead and move through these fairly quickly, but still giving us enough time to really try and get the essence of what makes these characters special and um, hopefully you get a little something from this and um, you're free to draw along with me or to just watch and me sketch. Either way, it's going to be a fun time. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me grab my swatch and let's see, I'm going to take my brush tool down just a little bit to about 17, I think would be good. So if you're just coming in, then I just want to give you also a welcome and say um, thank you for joining us. We're just getting ready to start our first pose. And this is Elsa from Frozen. Uh, so let's go ahead and go. And I'm using here, if you're not familiar with this channel, maybe this is your first time here, I'm using Photoshop. And all of these are preset, preset brushes. None of these are like special or customized brushes or anything. These are just preset brushes that I use. It's a really classic um, princess look that she has, but just has a little bit more sharpness to it. So I'm going to try and get some of that. Mm -hmm. Let's see how far we can get with this one. It really has more of like an uffy look, I think, almost. Mm. One of the things I noticed already, just like about, um, just drawing her just right now is a lot of the Disney princesses don't really have much of a nose bridge, but she is, um, but she definitely does. They like to really minimize the nose as much as possible on these, you know, female heroine characters. I'm seeing, um, she does really have a tiny nose, but you can actually see her nose bridge, and that's be probably because um, they've made her nose so straight. Really has a small forehead. Too. Just some of the things that you don't really notice, maybe just by observing observation, but just um, taking a couple minutes to sketch some of these things out really brings it to your attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. Her hair is going to fall apart before I get in. 
too much. Let's see. I really don't like the angle that they usually do with the shoulders. Go over it a little bit with darker pencil. Lay out to make it a little bit clearer when I'm going over it with a darker pencil. Oh no, I'm drawing this on the background layer. <laughs> that sucks. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to add another background layer. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna need to. Let's see. I'm gonna cut this bar here. There's a little Photoshop tutorial. I'm gonna cut this out and cut it. I'm gonna paste it on the bottom layer. And I can piece place. There we go. And now it should be now we should be good. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to clean this up a little bit. Put the opacity down there. And I'm gonna go in darker. I'm actually watching Alana. <laughs> It is my favorite film that Jin Kim has worked on. He's actually a bit older than I thought. He's, um, I was looking at Googling him this morning and he's actually like 59 years old. Let me see, I'm sorry. Back on a new layer, which is older than I thought he was, which gives me a little bit of hope. It's saying you don't have to get hired right at 20 years old to, <laughs> To work on a lot of these films is actually one of my favorite. One of them, which might be your dream too. So you don't have to learn how to master all these right out of high school, guys. Good time. And I'm doing this one right here. Case. We're not sure. I'm just going to pick one from each. I'll try and as possible. Look at all the eyelids. And actually, if you go to um, Jim Kim's website, he has like a blog site. Right now, um, uh, there's a lot of concept art from Moana still up. I think those are um, some of his more recent um, artworks, but they're up on his website. And if you get a look at his rough images, you're gonna be really inspired because they don't look like this right off the bat. They don't, he didn't draw them, you know, for the first time and looking like, you know, the perfect images that you see over here on the left side of me. He went through a very like, um, scribbly sort of process trying to figure out his poses. And um, because now, you know, it's easier for me because I'm referencing his images and just, you know, drawing them from his sketches, but, you know, he had to come up with them from his mind, and that's what it is, you know, when you're doing your own, when you're doing your own characters and you're doing your own concept art, you know, you have to come up with a lot of the poses and you're maybe referencing maybe something that you saw in real life, but there is no, you know, drawing reference for you to look at. So his original images are really sketchy, and I was actually you know, pretty pleasantly surprised by that because I didn't expect for them to be as scribbly as 
as they were. So it was, um, you were feeling like, you know, you have to get it, your sketch perfect right out of the bat. Um, not even the masters, you know, that we're studying here. Not even they do that. So you can, um, what's the word I'm trying to find? <laughs> Be inspired. And um, I want to write the name of his website. What is it? I can find it. His website is called Cosmo Animoto. Animato. Cosmo Animato. I'm going to write that. Let's see. Um, yeah, I can name of his website. Cosmo Animato. Yeah, I yeah. can. And you can check out his work because I think it's really inspiring to see, like, um, like I said before, how his rubs are done. I think it's great to hold on to your rubs and just keep them because, um, I mean, unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who trace. And if you trace, um, I just want to say it's it's. It's really, it's really not um, not going to help you. I mean, if you want to do it for fun, but I mean, I wouldn't even do it for fun because it's really like, I mean, you learn from from observation and from even from drawing from other people's drawing, you'll learn from that. But I don't really think there's much of anything that you'll learn from tracing. That's my personal opinion. Um, some artists will tell you differently. Me personally, I think there's no benefit in tracing anything, but um, keeping the roughs really um, lets you, and actually posting them will actually really show a lot more um, insight into people who are just looking, maybe looking at your artwork for the first time, and you'll get a better sense of how you work. You can really gain a lot from the way that people work just by looking at um, some of their rough images, and I think Come really handy. Hopefully, you take my advice, but if not, then <laughs> I can't make you. I can only suggest what has been um, helpful for me as I've gone through a lot of different pieces. And let's see, I think we're pretty, pretty much just let's see what else we want to do. Get more. Oh, there's our timer. It's like right in time. That was a pretty good one. Really thing. So, I really like the expression of that one. That was really cool. Let's see what else we have. And I'm going to go ahead. Oh, this is our friend. Um, I always tell him the name of those. Just send. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what this character's name is. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's right there. Is it like Hans or something? <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry. I don't remember the name of this character. It's right there though. That's an F, I think. What is his name? God, I forget it every time. Oh, well. anyway, I really love this character. Uh, you might have heard me say before, I'm not a huge fan of Frozen, but I think the designs are amazing. And I particularly love this character. I think he's so believable. And I think he's really nicely done. So I just have to give that um, shout out. So even though I'm not a fan of the movie, I can still be a fan of the artwork. And I think it's incredible. OK, so let's go to start this one and another 10 minute pose. And let's go ahead. I'm not sure which one I want to do yet. I really like this one. I think I'll do this one. Okay, let's go ahead. It'll come to me. I think it'll come to me, hopefully it will. If you know the name of this <laughs> character, please, please comment and let me know. I can't remember. And it's important to like, try and get a feel for the character's head 
I almost always do a circle here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the character's head shape is a circle. The skull is pretty much always the same shape, so that's a really helpful thing to keep in mind that this circle here is supposed to um, kind of give you a little guide for where the skull is, not necessarily like the actual head shape. Uh, so that was one thing that I really had an issue with. Um, I think when I was first starting art school and like, you know, I was trying to fit the whole face into the circle and it was really frustrating until I realized, oh, it's not supposed to be <laughs> the whole face. It's supposed to be the skull. And the, okay, so that makes it a lot easier to understand. Because I always see like animators doing this circle, you know, and I didn't understand. Okay, so today I'm doing an early session because um, a few of you might know, I don't know if I, um, how much I've mentioned this before, but um, I'm starting graduate school at um, California State on FEAR, and um, today we're having a potluck for the art department, so <laughs> it's kind of neat, I think that's kind of neat, so I'm going to be going to a potluck this morning in about well, pretty much as soon as we finish up here. So that's why I'm doing it a little bit early this week. And I think actually I'm going to be having um, some drawing class. Yeah, I'm going to be having drawing classes on Wednesday. So I will be changing the time of studying the masters, but worry not because the masters will still be um, every week. And I'm pretty sure as, as of now, it's still scheduled to continue to be on Wednesday. I don't know if it will always be Wednesday, but for now it will be. And Figure Friday will always be Friday. But um, <laughs> also to mention Figure Friday, I'm going to be changing the time of that for a while anyway. Um, so hopefully that's not an inconvenience. Actually, let me answer the phone really quick. I'm sorry, that's my son's school, so it's quite nice. Oh my goodness, I swear I always get like <laughs> uh, the wrong time. Sorry, that was um my son's fault. I thought it was an emergency, but it was actually not an emergency, so sorry for that. Just wanted to be sure that he was okay school is a whole other challenge <laughs> let's see and he's giving me the look like yeah <laughs> he's giving me the look this guy that probably uh, got it i can't remember his name i don't want to forget it oh man oh well i really need to slow down i think i've been rushing through a lot of things i gotta see i should just 
probably slow down. So I really apologize. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and clean this up. We have a couple of minutes, at least. I'm going to try and adjust a couple of things as I'm doing the cleanup. His eye size is a little bit smaller. And let's see. Let's see. Sometimes men's faces can be a little bit more hard for me because I, I definitely draw women more often than men. So but no excuse. I still want to try and get this as accurate as possible. And with some resemblance to the actual character at least. I really like the smirk here too. a lot more challenging than I thought it would be this time around. I know I've drawn before. So for some reason this is going to be more challenging. I don't know if it's just let's see. I made this face too broad right there and this enough on the other side. And for some reason you look like Aladdin for a second. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's see. And how far up does this thing goes all the way here? And the side comes down a little bit further. Let's see. Let's see. Kristoff, that's his name. <laughs> I knew it would come back to me eventually. I'm sorry that it kind of just blurted out like that. I knew I would remember it though. That's so funny. I always like, this is one of the few Disney films that I've always seen. Maybe one, maybe twice. I don't even think I've seen it twice. I think I've seen it like one and a half times. I saw it in the theater and then I think I saw like part of it on DVD. And I think this was before they were really um, putting there too many. I think this was before this thing was really going on. Netflix like they are now and even still I don't think they're putting this in major successful films like this on Netflix because this one was a huge success so whether I liked it or not it did amazing made them a whole lot of money even Broadway and everything I remember when I was going to see it, and um, the ticket, um, the ticket man, or however they're called, the ticket person. I'm gonna just. I only have like half a second left. Okay. But um, the ticket person was like, "Oh, this is like amazing. This is like the best Disney film since The Little Mermaid." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> so you really like made it like, you know, really spoke highly of it. So I was like, okay, let's see what's happening. So when it was not being like Little Mermaid, I think probably he set me up for failure. Because if you compare it to Little Mermaid, 
and he was an older guy, so probably um, Little Mermaid didn't have as much of an effect on him as it did, you know, from those of us kids who were born in the 80s. But, you know, Little Mermaid was huge for me. But, oops, his shoulder doesn't slump down that much. Even like something just like the shoulder not being quite broad enough or strong enough can make a huge impact in the way the character looks, as you probably noticed there. A bit of a flush in his face, like, I don't know, I'm like pushing it now. Let me see if I can use this. Help hugely, but I think it helps a little bit. The smudge kind of works like a pencil smudge would if you were drawing with a regular um, graphite. You can check out the smudge tool in your Photoshop if you like. Photoshop if you like. I like it a lot. Sometimes it helps, but it's still a little bit off. But oh well, that is. The closest I'm going to get for right now. I'm going to go ahead and move on up to the next pose that we have. And we have um, Mother. Gosh, that made me forget again. <laughs> Mother Gothel. I know it was like right there. Okay, Mother Gothel. She's like, um, I think, an amazing villain. I love her. And Tangled, unlike Frozen, I think, was phenomenal. I love it. I love it. I love it. It was a great, great film. And let's keep on moving. Actually, let's get that right pin side. Go ahead and turn this for another 10 minutes. And that, that's all. So let's start. Okay, so come on, Mother Gothel, what have you got? I have to do this one. I don't know why. Just, <laughs> it just really. And, that. and like, if you ever get a chance, or if you get a chance sometime today, um, while it's still kind of fresh in your mind, um, check out some of the concept art for Tangled by Jen Kim. It's really good. Um, some of the the stuff that he did for um, Mother Gothel is really scary. Actually, he has a then like the transformation of her trying like when she's like um, you know run out of time after. Um, then, spoiler alert, you know, uh, Rapunzel cuts her hair off at the end of the movie. I think mean, you probably already know that. But <laughs> after, you know, Rapunzel cuts her hair off, uh, Mother Gothel kind of just ages, like, really quickly and, and pretty much just dies. <laughs> so, um, he has, like, some concept images for, like, you know, what that could look like. And... I don't think they didn't use all of the ones that he did, probably because it was just really scary. She kind of turns into this skeleton, and it did end up being pretty, you know, pretty terrifying, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. But um, some of the images that he did for just the concept were even like more scary, I think. So maybe you might want to check those out at some point today. After we finish drawing here, of course. Oh, the piercing eyes is what makes it look even like more scary. She really looks like, <laughs> at least in my image, she looks really masculine without the hair. Just noticing that. The, um, the angles in her face are making her look more masculine. I haven't done any of the makeup. You know, also she kind of remind, reminds me of, um, with like the, 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 the little detail in the eyelashes and stuff it reminds me a lot of actually um, uh, the Medusa, what is her name, Mother Medusa? Madame Medusa from, um, that we were doing a few weeks ago, with no call, from the rescuers. And 
I don't really get to see all of it until I go back again with that other line. And I love that the little tiny detail with the line in her face. That's really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and I always like to start with the eyes when I'm doing clean up. It's the most important part. Um, Glenn Keen mentioned that a few times. You know, he's my favorite, but um, even before I knew who Glenn Keen was, I realized the importance of um, eyes. I still have not quite not gotten it right with eyelashes. I have an issue with eyelashes and making them look a little bit more believable. And hair in general It's one of the things that I want to work on. Really tiny little pupils, goodness. It kind of adds to like the newiness of it. I wonder if any of you guys play video games. I play video games um, not nearly as much as I used to. I devoted myself to drawing. <laughs> so a lot of the time that I used to spend um, with the games was like, um, has now been transformed into drawing time, but I do like to play if want, like on the weekend, like when I have extra time on the weekend or after the day is all the way over, like, like at 9 o'clock right before I go to bed or something, is when I'll have the chance to play. And my game of choice is, um, World of Warcraft, <laughs> um, and it has been for a long time. I started playing, gosh, I started playing in 2007, I think? Six or seven. It was, I think, probably, yeah, I think it was probably 2007. It was like not too long at first, but it was like my undergrad. I mentioned that now, not because it like <laughs> it has anything to do with what we're doing right now, but um, I just got the I just just now got the um, what is it called? The expansion, I guess it's called. And I think it came out a long time ago, but I just got the expansion, and I'm, I was trying it out. It's fine. Again, nothing to do with what we're doing now. I don't even know why, why it reminded me. Maybe something about the character. <laughs> Maybe something about her reminded me. Like about undead or something. I don't know. I don't know. I was just suddenly reminded of her or whatever reason. I tend to drop to automatically think of a more prominent forehead because I have a really <laughs> prominent one. So I have to be aware. Be aware of the things that like are particular to your own characteristics. That you don't just insert them into um, random characters because that can happen and that's why a lot of times you'll see people drawing characters and Somehow they'll resemble them in some way, but you won't even know how. And that's why we just intend to put our own traits, to, even just subconsciously, into it. I'm going to go really thin here to get it um, a bit more accurate. To make it, to make it not more accurate, but just to get a little bit more detail. You have to be really careful with the line to do that. Obviously, you know, a lot of these are not going to be 
super quick, even for Jin. I'm sure I'm calling through this much faster for me, but he really has to pay attention to the line with like these fine little details that he's creating. And he really did a good job, or does a good job, not just with this character, but with, I noticed with a lot of his art, really um, drawing little details inside of the mouth, like the tongue and the teeth, and the way he, he portrays that is a really nice, um, subtle, but a nice extra detail. Trying to get at least some of that into my drawing. I want to thank everybody for coming out on Monday to the zoo. It was really, really fun. I had um, two new people and one of my regular attendees who was always fun to be around. And so I really had a good time drawing this week at the zoo, and if you are in the Los Angeles area and you would like to join me, you can check out cartoonartcenter.com, which is the same as going to meetup.com, and then finding our group, which is called Cartoon Art Center of Los Angeles, and it is in Los Angeles, so you have to kind of um, be in the area to participate, but there's always this channel, which is available no matter where you are. Okay, this is this is pretty neat, actually. This is a fun process. I'm really seeing a lot of the detail in Mother Gothel that I didn't that I passed up before. No! Oh wow, that is fast. Wow, she's got a lot of little detail, so. Yeah, she took a lot longer than some of the other ones took. Oh, wow. You were fun, Mother Gothel. You were a lot of fun. I would stay longer, but I'm really trying to get through um, the remaining. Actually, you know what? I have a friend here, but I'm going to have to skip him. He's awesome, but we just don't have time to do everybody. And I really want to get to doing some Moana art, and so I'm going to have to say sorry. But I do want to get some more art in. We have to do that. So let's go ahead. We are at least already have um, one tangled character, which is great. So we're going to do a few from Moana, which I think are some of Jen. Well, personally, I'm, it's my favorite. <laughs> and hopefully, some of yours too. But really, he did. I don't think anyone can argue that he did an amazing job on Moana. Um, the, the concept art, if you've never seen it, check out Jen Kim if you want to. Google Jim Kim Moana or like Pinterest Jim Kim Moana and like just see it's really really nice like some of the best concept art I've ever seen since Glen Keen and some of it is even like comparable and you know beyond to some Glen Keen stuff really it's it's really good so enough of that so we're gonna start and this is a nice pose and let's just see this is our character Maui you get a really um, awesome job developing Maui and there's that timer. And um, that's all I can say for now. I mean, he's definitely unconventional um, as far as his, as his physical appearance. Uh, like the shape that they use for Maui are really, really different. Um, the head shape that was really like, I feel like, you know, taking it to a whole other. Um, style really. I don't know how else to even describe it because you know I don't even know how to describe the way that they did Maui because he's so different looking and like non human, I guess, looking, but at the same time, he still doesn't look goofy and he still looks very strong and, and, and powerful. So I feel like. That was really a good accomplishment because it's that's not an easy thing to put the hand in the wrong place. Let me figure out how to do this. 
two Ralphers for his arms. He still looks powerful, but at the same time, he really doesn't look conventional or like at all. So. I don't know how they did it, but they did a really good job. Good job, Molly. Good job, I should say, Jen Kim. You did an awesome job just um, with the concept art for Maui. I don't know if he's the only um, designer of Maui. Probably not the only, but I'm pretty sure that Jen Kim is responsible for finalizing Maui along with many of the other characters in Moana. And amazing job. What I really, as you already know, all of you who <laughs> have seen my channel before, I have a huge poster of Moana um, right behind me. Um, I'm like, Fresh, honestly, I fresh out the shower right before I got on. So I'm not like all ready and everything right now. I'm not fully um, ready. <laughs> but um, I wanted to just go jump right into drawing. So um, I do have a huge poster. One, I'm a big fan of the movie. And one of the reasons why I'm a huge fan is just because it's, and I'm not Hawaiian. You know, by any stretch, I don't have any wine in my family. I don't have any wine in my background. But um, what Moana did for many of us is really introduce a new type of character to um, mainstream animation that we have not yet to see, um, at least not in my experience, especially in feature film. Um, and that is this other type of character that's brown-skinned and thick, curly-haired, and really represents not only Hawaiian people, which obviously it's a huge deal for Hawaiian people because, I mean, this is all about Hawaiian culture, and you really did a good job representing and, you know, doing research, and I saw a lot of the, the making of and how they really wanted to uh, represent their culture in an honest way. Obviously, it's, it's still fantasy. It's still... Um, it's still story, but they really wanted to, you know, not just, um, what's the word, sort of simplify their culture or insult their culture in any way. And so that was an amazing thing that they did, but also it just really represented a whole other type of character that I don't think has been represented before, and that is really um, representative of mixed race people that hasn't been seen before so i really loved it and i really related to the characters in that sense and really felt like wow this is like a whole new level for animation because i'd never seen anything like it before so i was really excited about it. and i i think i said that to you guys because i'm like winded from <laughs> that statement like it's long but um hopefully it gets across you know how i feel or why i'm really um inspired particularly by Moana. Okay. It's certain there he's his first out. So before I go in with the final body, so to speak. But um, Jin Kim is an artist actually from South Korea. And um, let me tell you, boy, I, all of the artists that I've met, I don't know what kind of art schools they have <laughs> in South Korea, but um, a lot of my friends from art school were from South Korea. And let me tell you, so many of them are just 
miles ahead of <laughs> whatever sort of art training that we've had here and they just i don't know they, they must have like some really amazing programs for um high school students for you know training in art because they really are ready when they come to college they are already like those um who decide to become artists they really are just incredible amazing artwork i'm gonna go right into i think you should just you know and obviously when you draw a character that you really care about <laughs> um or really uh from films that you really care about, you're gonna have a little bit more enthusiasm too, and you might actually end up drawing them better. So if you're gonna do um, fan art, do fan art from films that you really love because you're just gonna automatically and in, almost instinctually um, be a little bit more, I feel like already like, I'm understanding this character a little bit more than some of the other ones. It's maybe because I was just pumping it up for a couple minutes for a sale, you know? I think that might have added to just my energy, and energy really overall impacts your artwork. It's undeniable, it really does. Okay. Wow, I'm just gonna make sure that I have too much of it. Um, let's see. I just think this drawing is just so cool. He just did an amazing job. What? Are, I mean, how cool is this drawing? <laughs> it's just really amazing. And I remember when I went to see, I don't want to brag or anything, but I did get to see the screening, which was awesome, at um at Disney Studios in Burbank, and it was really, it was really cool to see that. And they had all the concept art hanging on the wall, and it was really neat. I feel like I'm learning from sketching this. I've never sketched Maui, I don't think, ever before. Yeah, I've sketched Moana a ton of times, but I don't think I've ever. No, I've never sketched Maui before. Even though we doodled him like, in a funny way, like making fun of it. <laughs> I always make fun of the animations that I love. I probably make fun of them, but I, I never actually do them like this before. So this is a fun first time experience. Something really dynamic is, you know what? I can really see something in him that is reminiscent of the Beast um, from Beauty and the Beast, of course. Um, and I don't know what it was, but all of a sudden, I I saw it, and maybe that's also what I'm trying to get at here. Like, you don't realize what it is that you're putting in it until you actually sit down and draw it for yourself and then you can start to see it because this stance is totally like the stance that um wow that was really fast like the stance that um um the beast had like when bell saw him for the first time this is really reminiscent of that and you'll have to like google it or like watch it um on youtube or something but I know they have to have that clip of when, um, check out when Belle first saw the beast in that scene when she just saw him in the, what is it, the, the little, I guess, dungeon area that her father was in. And he just like, she told him to step into the light, you know? And it really reminds me of that. And I think that that's where he probably got it from. Um, he had to be inspired by Lenny Keene. I think any character designer that came after him had to be. Not had to be, but 
<laughs> Most likely. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going with mommy for a while because I think this is really cool. There's something really cool about this. And I think recognizing that is really cool because I didn't notice that before. And I really like that I kind of just realized that for a moment. Even for a moment. I might have to come back and do another, <laughs> a part two or something of, of studying Jin Chem because these are really neat. And I didn't think that Molly was going to take as long as it's taking. But there's really a lot of detail to focus on. And also, um, of course, some of the other ones too. I mean, I could have stayed much longer on the other ones as well. But how neat. So um, we're only going to be here for a few more minutes. And I'm going to see. That would be really cool to do a part two. A couple more. And but these are great. Because most of my um, studying the masters are have carried on to well over an hour, but today's session, at least right now, it's just an hour. But I would, man, these are great images. Oh, I feel very inspired now. <laughs> Not that it wasn't before, but. I don't know, there's something that was just like really cool about that moment. Do you feel it also? <laughs> it's a bit too geeky on you, but I don't know. When you recognize moments, that's something about, this is why I love drawing because there's just something special in it, you know? But for me as a sketch artist, it doesn't come from anywhere else. Honestly, it just, it's something that's just really special about drawing, and it's why I love it, because, I don't know, how, how can you like even predict things like that, that you're going to see the similarities between um, Beast and Maui, even though they're like totally different characters, and I was just wondering, you know, like, I wonder how they got him to be, even though he doesn't really look human, to just be so um, appealing as a design, you know? And that was the same exact struggle that um, that Glenn King had when he was designing the Beast, and, you know, he really designed the Beast, you know? He, did, he worked on that design for months, and, you know, he said, you know, he never really stops until the character is like reveals itself to him and like, okay, this is it. This is, you know, the final. He never really knows until it's there. Um, and he knew he had to make a beast and he knew he had to make him like um, be believable and scary and threatening and all this, but also it had to make it so that Belle was able to fall in love with him and he had to give him like find a way to um, make him appealing in that sense. And how he did it was he used all these different beasts, you know, like a um, wild boar and a lion and a, what else did he use? a buffalo and a warthog. And like he used all these different references. But then finally he gave him like, you know, these little cow ears he talked about and these really human eyes. And that's what really, you know, brought the final design to be. And I know I speak with it with a lot of <laughs> enthusiasm enthusiasm but I think um when you really get to it you realize that these things are so much more than cartoons it's so much more than that so much more than um just a drawing it's really really deep thinking to create something that impacts people to really really make art and I think it's something that's special and something that shouldn't be you know taken for granted I guess and so that's why I'm really grateful that I get to sort of pay a little bit of tribute to some of the artists that have inspired me and hopefully 
um, surely some of the artists that have inspired you. If you are interested in any particular artists that you would like me to demo on here, then um, I am very open for suggestions. Um, so let me know. It doesn't have to be a feature artist either. It doesn't have to be a Disney artist, obviously. We've done Don Bluth. We've done um, Chuck Jones. And the series is still very new. We only started it about a month ago. So let me know what you guys think. And if you'd like to demo a particular artist, that would be awesome. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to say adieu for now. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this um, time of studying the masters. And I will see you guys next time. Um, definitely for Friday and maybe even before that. So we'll see. I hope you guys have a great day. And as always, be grateful, live balanced, and be yourself. See you next time. Bye-bye.